So they've actually got an inscription of the words that Paul spoke up on Mars Hill here in Greek when he told the people from Athens that there is only one God and he is knowable. Here at Mars Hill in Athens is the area where the Apostle Paul made one of his greatest known speeches to the Areopagus. Today you can see the stunning views across the city and almost catch a glimpse of that moment 2,000 years ago. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to <laughs> debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears and we would like to know what they mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move, and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, We want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysus, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. We're currently going from Athens to Corinth, which is where Paul made the journey. After he spoke on Mars Hill, he came down to this cosmopolitan, thriving city of Corinth to preach the gospel to the Corinthians. Imagine what Paul had to face when coming to a place which was literally based on a cult of Aphrodite, Apollo, like a, a place just full of pagan witchcraft and 
and sacrifices and temple prostitution, much worse than we see in our, most of our cultures today in the West. So you t secretly tell people about Jesus? Yes. And they would meet him in, in secret? They kept him in their houses. Hmm. Not to find him. And a very difficult people to talk to about that. Because, mm. um, as you say, it was a very sinful culture. Yes. His first two students who gave hospitality to St. Paul was uh, Priscilla and Aquila, mm -hmm. a couple. But then Jesus came to me, not in righteous anger or in judgment, but in love. So if this culture of Corinth had a temple of Aphrodite, we can see that once again the mother goddess was being worshipped, which then links to Diana, Semiramis, all of the same thing. The pagan worship was going on here and Paul had the task of coming from Athens to Corinth with the good news of Jesus Christ as he came across Europe to spread the gospel message. Speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have no love. I'm nothing more than a cracked trumpet, or a bit of struck metal. I may be able to prophesy, to understand mysteries, to have immense knowledge of all things, able to move mountains even. But if I don't have love, I have nothing. Because the women would have been abused as prostitutes. Mm. So some of the Corinthian letters are very strict mm. about behavior. Yes. So maybe that's mm. why he's telling he's them right. to stay respectful mm. in church. Did you say that says in um, Greek? In Greek, synagogue Evreon. Our synagogue. So proof that the Jews were here. Mm. It wasn't the Greeks or the Romans here that wanted to be violent. It was the Jews. Yes, because they were afraid of him and of the Christianity. Because they said it was anti-Hebrew yes. by Hebrew scripture. Because yes. Paul originally was a Pharisee. At but, first, yeah. and then he changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He saw the light. And yes, then yes. He stopped being violent. Yes. Mm. So he was actually having problems with the people that he once was. Yes. Because he was a Pharisee. Yes. I did what I did because I was certain that I knew what God wanted, as you are certain now. But then Jesus came to me, not in righteous anger or in judgment, but in love. Jiren. 
with his cap. It's the same god of revolution, false god of revolution, the Freemasons symbolize. That looks an awful lot like the Statue of Liberty, does it not? It's the same goddess, the same goddess from Corinth. You know, imagine coming to a place like this and being faced with those challenges and, and having to put his fears behind him and stand boldly for Christ in a place like this. Um, it, you know, incredible. And that is the power of the Spirit of God, of Jesus, who works in us through our weaknesses. And it's just the courage that the Apostle Paul had in Christ to speak boldly the truth. And I think that really is a challenge for me. Look at that, that is quite moving. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. The letters Paul wrote to the people who had been converted to belief in Christ here in Corinth, the two books of Corinthians, Without love, I'm nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Yes, yes. Because he wrote that to the Corinthians. Yes. These things really happened, you know? This is real, legitimate history. The Bible is history. Even if people start to forget that and start to claim the Bible's not the truth, we can see all of these places. When you read the book of Corinthians, you can see who Paul was uh, writing to. You can look into the culture and how it was and why he wrote the things he wrote to relate to their culture. But the Christian church continued in Corinth when Paul left. They also, so did the pagan rituals. Yes, the Christians was uh, a few, okay. maybe 100, not more. So difficult for the Christians. Yes. But Paul's church thrived. Yes, yeah. but secretly. Secretly. Yeah.